All right, guys, in our last live stream, we were building a coffee bean app that allowed users to insert data into a database and then analyze it using our Python code and some SQL queries. And so what we've got here is the database.py file. If you were here in the live stream, then this is not new to you. Um, but if you weren't, then I'll just quickly go through what we've got here. Our application uses one table in our database, which is called beans, and it contains an ID or unique identifier for each bean and preparation method combination. Then we've got the bean name, how we prepared it, whether that's with an espresso machine or with a percolator or a filter, etc. And then what rating out of 100 we would give that bean and preparation. So for example, we could make a 100% Arabica bean using an espresso machine, and we would give it an 80 out of 100, let's say. And then we've got a few queries here to insert a new bean into the database. We're inserting the name, method, and rating, but not inserting the ID so that it can be generated by the database in an auto-incrementing fashion. And then we've got a couple of queries here to retrieve data. Select all the beans that we've got for display to the user, find a specific bean by name in our database, and also get the best preparation method for a bean, where we select everything from the beans table, we uh, filter by name, then we order by rating so that we get the top rated preparation method at the top, and finally we limit one to only get the top one. Then we've got some functions here to essentially interact with our database, to get a connection to the database, to create the tables, add beans, or find beans and stuff. So all pretty good here, and there's a few things going on that I'm not going to really discuss at this point, but you can watch the previous video to learn more about how all this is coded. In app.py, we've got our menu prompt, where we ask the user what they want to do with our application. And then we've got our menu function that essentially just asks the user over and over again and runs the appropriate function to let them interact with the database. So I'm going to right click this and run it just now to show you what it looks like. And you can see that we get our prompt here. We can do things like see the beans that we've got. At the moment, we've got this awesome bean one, but we can add new beans if we want. For example, uh, let's add some uh, pink quality beans and we've prepared it with a percolator and that's like 65 let's say and then we can find beans by name where we can enter the name and it tells us the stuff that we found here uh, and by the way it seems we have a missing bracket there so let me just add that in and finally we can see which preparation method is best for a bean so here we can put the bean name uh, bean quality, and it's going to find in the database which method is best, and it's going to tell us. In this case, it's a percolator. That's the only method we've got for that bean. But if there were multiple methods, then it would find the best one. All right, so now that we know how the app works, let's get into matplotlib. Here we've got charts.py, where I have imported matplotlib, and then I've started creating some matplotlib code. We've got plt.figure. This creates a figure in matplotlib. And then plt.show is going to display all the matplotlib figures we have created up until now. I'm saving it to a variable because we're going to use it to create some more stuff inside it. But plt.show does not need to know about this variable at all. It's simply going to display all of the ones we have created. So if I run this right now, you'll see that we get an empty figure. That's just a window where we can put axes. A pair of axes, which is an X and Y pair, or it can also be a three-dimensional set, is where we draw plots. So the hierarchy goes like this. Figure is in the outer box. Then inside it, we've got one or more axes. And inside an axis, we've got one or more plots. And so let's have a look at how we can create our axes. We've got figure.add subplot. And in here, we can pass in one, one, one. I'm going to assign this to the axis variable as well. So let me show you what this looks like before we discuss the 111 one, one there. You can see that now we've got the pair of axes here, and the 111 one, one have nothing to do with the limits on the x and y. 111 one, one is the location of the pair of axes within the figure. 111 one, one defines, first of all, the number of rows in the figure. The second one here is the number of columns in the figure. And the third one is the location of this pair of axes within that grid. So 111 puts the figure here inside the only row and column as the index number one. But if we do something like 121, then we end up with two columns. And now the one at the end represents which one of the two it is, starting with one and then two. 
If we do 2, 2, 1, though, we end up with something like this. Now, this is index 1, which is where we're at. This one here would be index 2, this would be 3, and this would be 4. So you can see that it goes left to right and top to bottom. Let's go back to 1, 1, 1, though. And I'm going to shrink this down here because for now, we're not going to really be using the user input, so we don't need that to be very big. Now, inside the pair of axes, we can do something like plot, and we can pass in two sets of values to plot. Let's do this, for example. Now, if we run that, we get a line chart. Essentially, what plot does is it puts specific points in the graph. Point 1, 3 is down here, 2, 5 is down here, and so on, and then it joins them with a straight line. We can also draw things like circles or triangles and so forth if we want. Now, instead of plotting, though, what we want to do is draw a bar chart. So we're going to do axis.bar. Now, if we run this, we now get our bar chart. The first set of numbers is the coordinates of each bar. So we, here we've got 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and so forth. And the second set of numbers is the heights of the bars. So the first one is three units high, and then this one's five, and so forth. We can also pass in tick label. And here, this is a list of labels one for each bar. So if we do something like A, B, C, and D, making sure that we've got the same number of labels as numbers, we now have A, B, C, and D. And notice that matplotlib no longer creates those intermediary or minor ticks in between two numbers, because clearly it can't interpolate between two letters. All right, so now that we've got this, let's grab some data from our database that we want to plot as a bar chart, get the user to tell us that they want to do that, and then we will make use of this to actually create the chart. So I'm going to start over in database.py. I'm just going to hide this down there. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a query here to get the data from the database that we want. In our bar chart, we're going to plot bean preparation methods like percolator, espresso, and so on to the average rating out of all the beans we've got in our database. So we're going to do something like get methods to ratings. And this is going to be select method uh, like this and average of rating from beans group by method. This group by is something that we discussed in the live stream. So if you missed that, do check it out. I'm going to leave it linked in the description of this video. So now that we've got this, we can use it to get for each method of preparation, the average rating out of all the beans. So we're going to grab this, go down here and create a function to execute this from app.py. So we'll do something like uh, get methods to ratings and this takes in a connection we're going to do with connection and then return connection.execute and then we're going to get methods to ratings and do a fetch all here as well to make sure to return that now we can grab this function and call it from app.py so all we have to do is add a new entry here to our menu which is going to be entry 5 make sure to update the exit to 6 which i did already and here we're going to put something like see which methods have the best ratings or something like that. Then in here, in the while loop, we're going to change the exit statement to six. And we're going to add a new elif branch. User input is equal to five. And here is where we're going to create our bar chart. So the first thing we have to do is do methods to ratings or something like that. Database dot get methods to ratings and pass in the connection that we've created and then we can create our graph here. So let's go over to charts.py and we're going to change this slightly to take in the data from the database and display it rather than just create a bar chart with some random data. So I'm going to put this into a function method to rating bar and this takes in the methods. And in here, we're going to essentially indent that we're going to create our figure, add our subplot, and then we're going to create our bar chart, but of course, with a bit more interesting data. The first argument is the x coordinates of the bars. So that should normally start at zero and go up one by one. So we're going to do range of len of methods. And that is going to give us essentially something like a list that starts at zero and goes up to the length of this list. Then we're going to generate method one for method in methods. That's giving us the height of each bar. And finally, tick label is method zero for method in methods. Remember that the methods here are a list of tuples where each tuple contains the method name and the average rating in there. So this is what's going to generate our bar chart. Then here we can return figure instead of doing axis.bar.
With this, we can go back to app.py, and in here, we can simply do plt.show after we call our charts dot method to rating bar passing the methods to ratings there make sure to import charts and the plt library there import matplotlib.pyplot as plt in order to do this notice that we're not assigning the result of method to rating bar to a variable but that's okay the pyplot library remembers every figure we've created plt.show displays it so we don't actually have to assign that to a variable if we wanted to save it to a file, though, we would not use plt.show. We would instead do figure.savefig. That's the way to create a file in matplotlib. And then we would need that variable to be returned. All right, let's try it out. Let me run app.py and make this a little bit bigger. We're going to type 5. And there we have our beautiful bar chart that plots the preparation names of espresso and percolator, in this case, to the average rating for each method. Notice that the uh, height of this y-axis goes from 0 to 65, really, because that's the highest bar that we've got. But we could manually tell it to set the y-limits between 0 and 100. Since we know all our figures are going to be between 0 and 100, we can close this, minimize that, go to charts.py, and in here say axis.set y-lim to 0 and 100. That's going to set the limits there. If we rerun app.py and try again, now you'll see that we get the limits between 0 and 100. And there is so much more that you can do with matplotlib, from plotting, you know, line charts, bar charts, pie charts, etc., to plotting custom charts that the community has developed, and much more. Oh, made that big there. And, but really the most important thing that you can learn about matplotlib is the fundamentals of how it operates and its structure. Things like uh, manipulating graphs, uh, setting up axes, how the different uh, hierarchies operate, how to save files, how to change grids, and things like that. So all of those things are stuff that we cover in our complete Python and Postgres course 2.0 that we have literally just released. So if you want to learn more about databases as well as matplotlib, how to create Python applications that use databases effectively, how to work with dates and times, that's a very common problem inducing topic for new developers when working with databases, and a lot more, then please check out the course. It's linked down in the description below, and I would love for you to join me in that one. I've given you a very good price on that course for the next three days, so if you want to check it out, then I would love that. All right, thank you guys for joining me in this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Remember to like the video and subscribe. Thank you for getting to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.